I'm Scott L. Miller, and this is my everyday life living in Leon, Nicaragua with really loud barking dogs. I came outside to today's video, and the rain started, and the dogs started losing their mind because it's my first chance to come outside today. Today, I'm going to be answering a question about air quality here in Nicaragua. Of course, there's some people who are uh, seeing certain aspects of, of life here and be like, the air must be fantastic, and others are like, ooh, I've got some real concerns, and both have some points. We're going to talk about those on today's show with a video question sent in by one of you guys. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. We're going to get to that right after the bump. In the modern world, air quality is a major concern for a lot of people, especially if you're coming from someplace like Europe or Asia, where there tends to be big cities with a lot of air quality problems. Even Strasbourg in northern, northeastern France has some of the worst air quality in Europe, even though it has no manufacturing, simply because it sits in the wrong spot and catches a lot of smog. So. We got a question today from a viewer. He sent this in this morning and figured what a great opportunity to get right to this. And oh, thank you to the dog for adding that to the show. And we're going to take right over to the viewer question. Hi there, Scott. I really enjoy looking at all the videos on your channel. Just a plethora of information um, for the country of Nicaragua and surrounding regions. Really, really good content. Uh, one question that I haven't uh, seen directly um, answered is the question of air quality. I'm curious because I've heard something about you know the volcanoes when the wind blows heavily the dust can potentially get blown into the cities or just the surrounding areas. I'd love to hear you comment on that. How have, have you have you find it have you how you found it rather um, in the cities, in the countryside, etc. Is it noticeable? Are the skies always very clear? Is there smog at all? PM 2.5 which is the really small let's say microscopic uh, dust particles that uh, other parts of the world suffer from um, that have those hazy skies. Is that really a thing in Nicaragua? Thanks, Scott. So the first thing that I want to note as we start talking about this topic is that like many things, there aren't a lot of measuring and censoring systems here in Nicaragua. We're a small place and very poor. So setting up a lot of air quality monitoring systems around the country is not something we're going to expect to find. Uh, so getting good information about any particular bit of data about the country can be a bit more difficult than people realize. We do this all the time with like weather things. People are like, well, what's happening here, happening there? And like, unless someone's out there with a camera looking at the sky, we're often dealing with just data being pulled from Managua and very little else. So some of this information we have to kind of extrapolate based on knowledge of the country and what little bit of monitoring actually exists. So please bear that in mind. We do not have, this is not the United States. There's not a sensor in every little town reporting real-time air quality in every jurisdiction back to a central system that can create a map for you. Anyone who's giving you that, that information is essentially guaranteed to be made up or somehow how extrapolated. Maybe they're trying to give you good information, but it's going to be very difficult to be accurate. That said, I did look up the air quality today here in Nicaragua earlier this morning, and we got an excellent score off of the sites that I looked at. So today especially is quite a good day. So we definitely have clear days. So the first question, do we get clear skies here in Nicaragua? Yeah, absolutely. Of course, it's raining as I'm saying this, but rainy days are generally pretty clear as far as air quality because rain takes uh, impurities out of the air. So that tends to be good. So about six months of the year, you have rain going on on a regular basis, not all day long, but it rains nearly every day. So you get a lot of clean air because of that. During the other half of the year, you are in the dry season. So then tends to get very, as the name implies, dry. When it's dry, you're much more likely to get dust and stuff in the air. However, we do nearly all year round when it's not cloudy, have really clear skies. And I guess you could say it's a clear sky in that you could see the clouds really clearly the other days, but we tend to have great visibility with good clear air. As I'm recording, I turned the camera a little bit because Chepe is actually on the roof right over here working. And I didn't even know he was there until I heard some noise. And I'm like, whoa, I can actually see him standing up there. So I'm going to move over to a different part of the yard a little bit away from the drill sound. So sorry, because we had some really good light over here, but uh, it's a little bit loud from time to time. All right, it should be a little bit quieter over here, and I have just a little bit of shelter, so this very light rain isn't really hitting me now, so we should be okay. Let's get to it. Okay, so for in general, 
the rainy season is really excellent here in Nicaragua. You're going to find that the air is perfect through most of that season. Once we hit that dry season, which is for six months, so, you know, be aware, this is half the year we're talking about. Everything is super dry, and any pollutants that are going to go into the air are going to hover quite a bit. We don't have that rain to clear them out, and we, uh, we have ground, right? The actual physical ground gets really dry, and it's really easy for that dust to get stirred up. Now, generally, we're not super concerned about that type of pollutant in the air. That's not the really nasty stuff. It's not what causes smog. It's not what causes, you know, lung disease and stuff. So we're not normally too worried about just dusty air, but it's worth noting that it can happen simply because we become a semi-arid country for several months of the year. So we, we feel that, right? You also get a lot of plant particles in the air. A lot of really dry grasses and stuff will start getting into the air just because there's a lot of them. So that's something to be aware of. We also have a period of time typically for most years where our our skies do become uh, uh, hazy, but it's not from pollutants. It is, again, it is from dust, but it's not dust from here. We do, we are part of the tropic uh, uh, rainforest zone, and most of those zones are fertilized by Saharan dust storms. So if you check Saharan dust storm maps, you'll see that the Sahara blows over, and this area and Honduras are in the northern edge of where that sandy, nasty, dirty air blows from the Sahara. But again, this is basically clean, just dirt. And so our skies get full of it and we tend to get it towards the end of the dry season. And it's what keeps the Amazon so lush and fertile as well. So this is super important for a lot of things, but yes, it does impact air quality in some ways, but it's not those, those nano uh, uh, little pieces that are such a problem. It's bigger things. So we don't really worry about it until that first rain comes and it's like mud falling from the sky. And then you really want to wear dark clothes for a bit and wash quite often, but you really don't notice. And this year we didn't notice it at all, but in previous years it was very noticeable. But it's just something to be aware of. In general, though, these are not things that we care about too much. If you're a person who's really into just every bit of air quality, these are things to be aware of. And I don't want you to be surprised by them, but they're not generally health issues in any way. Most of what people worry about in much of the world, we don't have here, and that is industrial uh, air pollutants. So if you're in like Europe or Asia, there's generally a lot of factories and stuff that are making products out of a lot of nasty or potentially nasty materials or just doing big industrial processes and billowing smoke and stuff. They've gotten better about that, but there's still a ton of it going on in a lot of the world and some places, especially that have low lying valleys like Strasbourg in, in France, uh, tend to collect that smog. So even places that aren't industrial, We'll sometimes get it from places hundreds of miles away and Western California sometimes gets from China it blows across the Pacific and collects because of the mountains in in California and they just happen to get that wind directly from the uh, industrial areas of China so it doesn't mean that you're the one producing that stuff so potentially here in Nicaragua, we could not produce anything and still get a bunch of smog, but generally we don't. Our neighboring countries are really clean too. Famously to the south, uh, Costa Rica is known for being super green and having good air quality for the most part and not producing a bunch of, not being industrialized in that way. So they're really good at their air quality. Next to them is Panama, very similar. We have a lot of just our neighboring countries to the south tend to be very clean and green. And as we go north, it's slightly less. There's a little bit more manufacturing in Honduras, but the majority of Honduras is a rainforest just like us. So we have big swaths of Honduras that are not producing anything nasty and are in fact like us cleaning the air uh, before it gets to us. Our air typically goes east to west. So we have this mass of the world's second largest rainforest is cleaning the air before we get it. So that's how it's generally pretty good. We're in a good physical position with our surrounding countries as to how they impact us and we don't really generate smog type things on our own. So for the most part, that's not something we have to worry about uh, internally. Like the number of factories we have are super few and far between and they tend to be assembly facilities not actually formation facilities so it's not like they're like foundries where they're heating things up or making chemicals uh, normally they are things that we get parts from this country parts from that country they come here and we put them together maybe do some tweaking and stuff which still can produce some some you know some pollution but it's really minor compared to a factory that's like smelting or something like that so that's really good for us here. We tend to be extremely green in that sense. So there was the very clear, clear question of what about the volcano? So in general, you don't worry about volcanoes. Uh, they are natural processes and they're not normally producing a bunch of nasty stuff. When they erupt, it's, the air quality drops pretty dramatically and you can 
die, right? So be aware that when it's clear, it's clear. And when it's not, it kind of is not. Um, now, most of the country does not sit around worrying about erupting volcanoes. That's not a day-to-day -day thing. But when they do erupt, normally you get in the car and move away or look at it from a distance and say, that's cool. What a neat thing to get to watch. Pull out your camera. People will watch that. But uh, unless you're in a place like Chinandega where the ash actually falls on the city, chances are the volcanoes are not really going to impact you. They might put a little bit of dust into the air, but it's really minor. Um, it's, it's not like there are big clouds coming up from one of the volcanoes. I'm not talking erupting. I'm not just saying like there isn't like this spewing nastiness coming out of the volcanoes that we have to deal with on a regular basis over most of the country. Where we do see this impact is areas like La, uh, El Crucero in the south of Managua. However, in that zone, I'm not aware of anyone being concerned with particulates in the air. What's actually going on is that there's acid in the air, which is natural coming out of uh, the, sulf the sulfur beds of the volcano. So that could be an air quality issue, but generally we don't worry about sulfur in the air for our bodies, but it does impact the environment. So it makes it difficult for the trees to grow. Uh, you, you know, growing fruit and stuff would be difficult up there. You tend to just have kind of shrub grass in most areas, and it's very wear and tear on things like your house or a car. You're going to get rust or paint damage. Your materials that you build with don't last as long, like noticeably not as long. But I've never heard of anyone saying that the air up there was a problem for health reasons. Maybe it is, but personally, I wouldn't be concerned about it in that zone. And that's the heaviest impact of volcanic air anywhere in the country. Uh, so, you know, maybe don't choose that particular location. But the reason that that one is so acute is that it is a mountain ridge directly beside the volcano. So they're at kind of the same level. I mean, technically it's lower and the air blows off the volcano, goes over the valley and it hits that mountain ridge and goes up over the ridge. So the, the top of the ridge has this volcanic air just flowing over it all the time. So when it's a dry day, you have volcanic air that you notice. And when it rains, it's catching that and making a little bit like acid rain, not smog-based acid rain, actual just sulfuric uh, acid in the air, acid rain. And again, you don't notice it. You could stand in the rain all day. It's not going to impact you. But if your house is getting rained on year after year, it starts to have its paint not hold up. And when the paint doesn't hold up, the, the concrete underneath also doesn't hold up and so forth. So things tend to wear out pretty quickly just because they're exposed to that, but not things that you would generally need to worry about. And certainly you wouldn't worry about traveling through it. Very few people live up there, partially because you can't grow trees very easily, and your houses melt away. So it's not super popular to live in that zone. But that's the only reason that it's so impacted is that that air is just cresting the ridge there. And then it immediately goes down into a forest zone, which absorbs most of that, not an area you would live in. There's no houses out there. And then it heads out to the coast in an area that's simply not impacted, right? So that air tends to be above the ground. Um, and even if you did live out there, you would never notice uh, that you had that, that maybe kind of less positive air up above you as it goes goes out to sea. So not, not really a big deal. I don't know of anyone who would worry about the volcanoes as far as their impact on air quality here in the country. I'm sure they play a minor role in the overall air quality picture, which is generally pretty good. But sometimes we do get particulates that is real. We do have one thing, though, that really does impact air quality and what in general, our air quality is pretty decent. And every time I check, it's always good to excellent. But there are times that it is not as good there's one activity uh, that is really impactful and noticeable when you're here in the country. And it doesn't take very long being here in Nicaragua before you realize this. So it's best to mention it because you will not appreciate coming and being surprised by this. And that is that all over the country, and this is a cultural thing, and it is not going to change quickly. They are trying to reduce this, right? There's, it's not that it's not an attempt. It is that this is a very difficult cultural thing to change. And people do not understand the concept of air quality. So you're talking about a multi-generational educational activity that has to happen to make any kind of movement on this. And that is burning trash. People burn their trash everywhere. It is what is done. So we have a number of things that need to happen to fix this in the future. And that includes trash reduction mechanisms, trash collection that is a little bit more convenient. They do really good trash collection today, but most of that trash collection just results in burning anyway. But the first step is getting it so that people aren't dealing with it on their own, uh, getting it so that like animals, that's one of the biggest problems we have here is that animals and weather events tend to make a big mess out of the trash that we have. And that makes it more difficult to deal with and much more difficult to centralize. Once we get it centralized, 
decentralized, then we need to tackle uh, getting it processed in a much better way. So this is a long-term thing, but they are working on this. We are seeing a lot of initiatives around reducing trash and keeping the country green and reducing littering and so forth. So the country in that way is much like the United States in the 1970s and starting down that path and hopefully are going to be successful in the short term. But they have some real challenges. And one of the biggest ones is this belief that the best thing to do with your trash is to set it on fire. And trust me, I grew up in the United States and this is what we did with our trash in the U.S. as well. It just wasn't as widespread. I grew up on a farm. That's how farms handled it. But if you lived in the city, they didn't do that. Here, the farms and the city do that. So it's kind of like the U.S. a few years before I was a child. But I certainly grew up with the idea that, of course, you just burned your trash. You would have to borrow a truck, drive really far, spend all kinds of money on gas, all to throw your trash in a place that's probably burning it anyway. So why would you not burn it yourself for free and save all that fuel of taking it somewhere? That was the logic when I was a kid. That is the logic here. People have no idea how it could be negative. So people take all their trash, put it in a pile on the street, People do it in different ways, but this is the most common. They just put it on the street in a pile and light it on fire every day. So it's not like one giant fire where you're like, oh my gosh, there's this huge fire, but there's little tiny fires all over the place. I'm not saying you go through the city and every person's doing this. We have really good garbage collection in the city. We have really good you know, trucks that go around and people who clean up everything that they can. They really do put in a real effort. And people say, why don't they just supply a blah, blah, blah. Of course we have those things you're not thinking about how to tackle the actual problems. Don't give a North American, well, we do things this way, so it must work there. Obviously, we're trying all those things. This is a real pro big problem that is trying to be tackled, and it is being tackled, but just like in North America, we can't snap our fingers and make it go away. An effort has been taken, and lots of people are involved in this, and everybody in society wants this to be solved, but it takes time and money and training and resources, and that, that just is coming. But as it is, you go up on a really high point. So here in Leon, we tend to be on the dry side, right? You want really good air quality, probably don't be in the driest regions. Uh, look from a high point and look out over the city and you'll see little tiny bits of smoke all over the place. And of course, smoke, especially from trash rather than like a nice clean wood fire, is gonna have some stuff in it that you don't want in the air. That's the major source of our air quality issues. If you're going to find something in the air that you don't like, almost certainly that's where it's gonna come from. And you can get nearly anything in the air that way and the amount that you get can vary quite a bit from absolutely none on a day like today we probably would have nothing and that's why it says excellent to a really hot dry day where everyone feels it's a good day to burn their trash you you're going to have a noticeable amount of it now different parts of the countries are going to a country are going to have different effects of this if you're in the big cities managua leon for example it's going to be noticeable. You are going to be aware that this is happening. You know, we may not notice it every day, but from time to time, you'll be like, oh, someone's burning trash. I can smell it. Oh, look at these people burning trash. Oh, I got to a high point. I can see people burning trash. Or you can go to the big trash piles, which I have shown on the video previously, and huge fields of trash on fire. You really notice it when you see one of those. So this will happen in those big cities. When you go to small cities or small villages, you may not notice it at all. And you may have places like Nagarote, where they basically have managed to eliminate it completely by, by reducing their trash and getting lit off the street. So each jurisdiction is going to have its own mileage. And so little places could do much better than big places and so forth. And if you want to live in the country, you could easily end up far away from people and in a situation where you really don't notice it at all. There may not be anyone who's doing those things. So depending on where you want to live and the uh, part of the country you want to be in and the size environment you want to be in and so forth, you may be in a spot pretty easily where your air quality is really excellent. Uh, and uh, you may be in spots that are a little bit more difficult. Overall, I think across most of the country, Country, most forms of air pollution are pretty good and living here we generally think of the air as being pretty good. We do notice when we have the trash fires burning, but that's really about it except for the small time of the year when we do get the haze from the Saharan dust storms. In general, having grown up in the United States and having lived around the world, of course, places like Crete in Greece, we uh, often found living on the island in the Carib in the Mediterranean to be really good air quality, but it's pretty good here. It's not a thing that people are really concerned about, and those that are would have a lot of flexibility in finding areas where it would be absolutely excellent nearly all the time. Nowhere is perfect, and I'm sure there are parts of the world that are better, uh, probably in bits of South America where there is just 
lower population zones over a really big area. However, Nicaragua is surrounded by the ocean primarily and to the south by and the north by very forested countries or jungle countries. Most of our own landmass is a jungle. So if you look at it from that perspective, it's easy to understand why even a few bad behaviors here in the country and being in the tropics can lead to still having really good overall air quality. Of course, we are still in the tropics. So be aware that things like pollen are very possible. There's a lot of things just stay in the air naturally and things are warm. So even though uh, the air quality may be X, it may affect you slightly more than in a cold environment simply because of the higher activity in the air. So all things to consider, but overall air quality is pretty decent. And if you check Managua from time to time, you can use uh, different applications. I wouldn't check different parts of the country. I would stick to Managua itself. And remember that whatever you're seeing reported in Managua is probably the worst or nearly the worst in the country. And everything else is probably better unless it's directly in line with an erupting volcano or a day where just a lot of trash is being burned because Managua is the only large city. So if you're going to get any amount of pollution, air pollution, that is where you would expect it to happen. And it is also kind of in not really a bowl, but it's got mountains on three sides. So some of that nasty air will collect there a little bit in ways that it won't in other cities like here in Leon where we're flat and the air just passes right over. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. We have a subscription that you can join down below, which is just $5 a month and helps make a regular commitment to support the show because it is very difficult to keep this going and to pay for all the things we do. So we really appreciate everyone who helps sponsor us. Of course, liking, subscribing, leaving your comments, asking your questions, sending in videos, things like that help a lot. And of course, tell someone about the show and I will see all of you tomorrow.